related literature. Um, there is a fair amount of literature on there, but most of it is fairly descriptive, and what is out there really focuses on the instructor end, um, instructor-led efforts from the LMS. I'm hoping that my study helps re reorient that focus more to student uses. Um, Morgan talks about accidental pedagogy, uh, that instructors continue use exposure to LMS and affects their learning or affects their instruction over time. Um, I'm hoping that findings from my study might be applied directly to course use as well, so that uh, students' collaborative instruction can directly impact students' teaching and be less accidental. I also am um, explicitly connected the LMS use to the design and use of educational theory in scholarly communities such as modern sciences, uh, peer support and collaborative learning, and others as well. So in the future, um, either in my postdoc or in, in other ways, um, I, I'm hoping that I might you know, be interested in, in a similar investigation to my study were applied to different contexts, in a different discipline, or even in a distance learning environment. Because this is done um, here in Michigan, it's a more of a blended where students still have face-to-face -face instruction, and it's not a distance ed where students don't meet at all, meet maybe only once together. So that could definitely affect these kind of results. Um, as well as identifying testing the scaffolds that I raised earlier. And really to continue to apply learning technology research to LMS to drive design and innovation. Um, I really thank the designers, some of which are, you know, right there smiling at me, um, <laughs> that need to draw from, they really, I really think educational research can help inform uh, the design of these tools, uh, apply the best learning theories and technological tools in the systems. And help drive home that point. Uh, here is a quote from Carmina Hafner, and they were talking about a combination of learning principles and LMS tools. Because LMS brings so many different tools and different possibilities together, it has so much possibility that it needs to continue to be explored and researched in order to maximize learning opportunities and hopefully deep, meaningful, and engage and provide engaged learning. Sometimes they're bouncing back and forth, so those are chunked together. 
but generally in our test tools, we're usually composed thoughts like from each student. And while they might reference another student's uh, message, they weren't necessarily about the overall the same topic. So very rarely were announcements uh, combined with some of the things. It might be useful to think about how, how, uh, how useful it would be to use that notion of topics, the word topic you mentioned several times there, and highlight that in the discussion about the breaking up of the messages. Okay. Uh, and also maybe even to include a table or an appendix that gives examples of actual messaging and so much type would help the reader in a clearer sense. Sure. Uh, and then a sort of related question, you, you chose not to use the second label to mm -hmm. make the message unit determination. Um, I assume because you thought it was a pretty cut and dry procedure. And you also mentioned that there were a few times when you had a conversation with someone else that led you to go back and change the message. How did that work and how comfortable are you after that with not having I mean, an iterator like that? I mean, hindsight's always 2020. So if I could go back and do maybe more a little systematic, that's that's possible. Um, generally, I, I thought, it, as you said, I thought it was generally cut and dry the way I was doing it. And what happened is, as we started coding, going through these, it seemed that oh, you know, well, maybe there actually is two different thoughts within that message. Um, when there's 21 groups and over. Uh, because there's 400 units, you can imagine there's thousands of different messages being sent back and forth in the systems. You know, that's where probably one pair of eyes maybe wasn't always enough in terms of this coding. So if I could do it all over again, yeah, I think maybe I would do a second reader doing the message unit coding. On the other hand, it is interesting to look on and to look within um, the computer uh, these types of studies and to see people that draw messages around line and how you would not mention second coders or second raters when they're defining message units. Or even body cam or something. Yeah, it's, it's not even <laughs> literature. Uh, another sort of related question in my mind has to do with the, the, the fact that by definition, message units that you code as knowledge construction are much bigger than message units probably that you code as collaboration and certainly bigger than the ones you code as basic interactions, right? Um, they take up <coughs> many exchanges, at least from the examples you um, And that to me raises a question, I'm not sure I have the answer to this, but it's just a little interesting point to is, is that this category of knowledge construction units, which is the thing you're most interested in really, uh, is by definition subsuming big chunks of the communication mm -hmm. that's going on in the system. Um, and then you're using it to create a percentage. You're using this to denominate these myriad individual piecemeal mm -hmm. messages. And then you have to, of course, have to say, oh my gosh, there are only 3% examples of knowledge construction. I feel like something about the way you coded this may lead you to be a little more pessimistic uh, than you should be about the proportion of what was going on here that was this time. Um, so you're thinking maybe just the way I put it in, just to rephrase, maybe more of a Smith thing that learning isn't happening with these systems or that you're seeing, you, know, you may be, there may be more knowledge construction happening with the system. So, a, do you want to meet on Thursday? Yeah, it's short and you're right. going at basics. If they're having this knowledge discussion conversation that goes back and forth and is fairly complicated, you may have a sequence of text that visually takes up this much, but right. that count, that's counted that's as one. one. Right. Versus you've got one, 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 one for a lot of basic interaction. So the denominator, you're sort of working size. against yourself. Right, the grain size is different. Mm -hmm. size. Uh -huh. The grain size is different. Um, but I also wager that that doesn't impact many of the groups um, because that was only evident.